Good morning. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Probably about 70% of you are watching and not subscribing that are regular viewers. So it'll help my channel enormously if you could subscribe and put a tick on the bell notification. That way when a new video pops up and they're popping up very regularly as you notice during the month of July, you'll be notified. So make sure you don't miss out any videos. Today's video, we're going to go back to my 12 volt system install because that's basically what I've been mainly concentrating in the past week and a half. I'm going to show you a schematic diagram of my 12 volt system as it is today. So it'll show the DC hub, how it works and how it incorporates with all the components that's in my system. And I've also shown all the cabling as well in this schematic. Now how I came across this schematic, a mate of mine, Ian. Hello Ian, how are you? Thanks for doing this for me. You got me started on this. So Ian and myself were up very late last night. And working together, completing this schematic through his help. So I'm going to queue over to the screen here. So you know when you see on the movies they got the little crink like that, but I do this. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Normally I edit that out, but I'm going to include that just to make sure we're in sync. One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> All right, let's cue to the screen, shall we? Now. That's my 12 volt system that I have been working on. The only thing I haven't put on here is the trouble buddy. I forgot to do that last night. So just imagine there's a trouble buddy here. And the trouble buddy is actually shared with this cable here. You'll see this power lead here. That's running from the DC hub. That's going to the rooftop tent power. So whenever I use the trouble buddy, I just disconnect that and I plug it into that. The rooftop tent is 15 amps and the travel buddy consumes around 10 amps. That's the Egon DC hub. This will give you an idea how this works. As you can see, it's very simplified. So you don't need a diploma degree to understand this one, guys, like a lot of them out there are. Like a lot of these schematics are with all these different weird, willy, lines that look all terrific but well, i reckon this looks better any average joe blow would be able to look at this and say ah okay cool although in saying that i actually shared this photo on a facebook group this morning and i had comments coming back where's your fuses for all your devices you got no fuses on there the only fuse i can see is the one that's on the battery oh you're doing it all wrong oh this is all bad oh you're gonna cause a fire oh, <laughs> oh no, God. what do you think these are guys do they look like something to you what do they look like f u s e no not the other f u f u s e what does that stand for ah uh, Let's all do it. One, two, three together. Can we all do it again? F U S E. I can't hear you. What's it mean? Let's do it. Fuse. <laughs> Each individual component you see installed on this DC hub are all fused separately. You can see, let's go for start here along the bottom. You can see I've got 10 connections along here. So all each one of these can, connections can handle up to 25 amps each. So at the moment you can see I've got my fridge. I've got the power for the Victron 4G LTE dongle. And I've got the power for the Servo GX. I run the USB chargers in there so I can charge my phone, etc. And I'm running the power up to my rooftop tent. Because as you know, it's an electric rooftop tent. And it's also got two fans up there. And it's also got LED lights up there. And it's also got charge ports in there that are all included. <laughs> You've probably heard me say that quite a few times. 
even my 600 watt inverter is connected through the DC hub which is fused by 80 amp fuse now that's the maximum I can put on there it's a maximum is an 80 amp fuse and that's what this big green connection that I'm circling is that is an 80 amp fuse it's not the maximum the whole DC hub can handle and we'll get to that I'll tell you what that is shortly what the maximum that this can handle which is equivalent to what's fused down here the main fuse on the battery which is the midi fuse it's 150 amps so that means this DC hub can withstand 150 amps constant going through it what most people do that's got these DC hubs is they run their ARB twin compressor off that which is what I'm going to do eventually because as you're aware I own the ARB twin compressor and the top compressor is that inverter will go mount straight to the battery but we're going to talk about that soon later I've got something to say about the inverter you might notice there's no AC charger here as well so we'll talk about that later see these little red LEDs and that's the beauty of this DC hub not only this is very easy to connect and wire up and there's no special connectors guys there's no special connectors just a screwing terminal so as long as you've got a good clean connection and you've tightened these down to the correct specifications you're not going to have any problems and just check it every so often particularly if you're regularly for driving just get a, get a screw driver and just just make sure they're tight so what happens when a fuse blows what do those LEDs do they switch on they come on so quick fault finding so I can just come up to a vehicle look at it oh that lights on I need to replace that fuse something's going on I put the fuse in boom blows again oh there must be something wrong with for example my fridge okay I'll have to look into the fridge there must be wrong with it you know it's blown twice easy fault finding you also notice everything is all based around that everything's all connected to that so it minimizes the amount of wiring it minimizes the joints okay there's less joints you have to use here because you have a look here there's no joints the straight cable right into the DC hub the only places that got the joints it's where it needs it is for your connectors to your MIDI fuse and the connectors for the the shunt okay so that's the shunt that goes with your Victron BMV 712 smart controller you see the way the red arc DC DC is wired up there's no joint I just snipped off all the connectors that I had on there connected it right into my DC hub as you can see here so it's in, even including the solar input so that yellow cable is the solar input that red one I believe I think it's the red one is the one that gets the power from when you start the car so I used to have that cable run all the way up to the starter battery I eliminated that cable I didn't need that expensive cable anymore and I just gone back to the short lead mounted this next to the DC DC app and you can see the solar panel the yellow one and this plug here with the Anderson plug guess what that's for can you guess can you guess? <laughs> That's for your solar input for the red arc. So as long as it's a 12 volt unregulated, has to be unregulated because you can't put a regulator through the regulator because the red arc DC DC charger, in particular this one here, the 1225D, has got a built in MPPT solar regulator. So as long as I bypass the regulator from the solar panel and plug it straight into that Anderson plug, that will charge my battery. That will go through the DC hub and charge my battery. Same with my Safari 250 watt high voltage portable solar panel. And that's connected through to my high voltage MPPT solar regulator which is 100 slash 50 the 100 means it can handle up to 100 volts coming in the 50 is means it can put out up to 50 amps these leads here this red and black here normally connected straight to your battery that you want to charge well it's going through the DC hub and we got one big thick cable 
huge thick cable that's running through to the DC hub as you can see and it's fused to 150 amps so this here can have a constant 150 amps running right through it so say I'm running my ARB twin compressor and it's drawing like 60 amps I'm running the travel buddy it's drawing another 10 amps I'm charging three or four mobile phones another 5 amps or whatever what are we already up to 70 80 amps or whatever I mean and you can do that twice again so you can run all that at the same time and it won't affect this and if it does you've got a nice big fuse here that'll protect it so if you have a look at this diagram and you're thinking there's no fuses on here well they're all there guys look here they're all built into this DC hub at this moment this is what I've been building this is it guys so you can see the Serbo GX right here well, just below the Serbo GX there's something that I've been talking about I don't own that device yet but I'm going to order it that's the thermometer so I can plug up the four thermometers into that Serbo GX so it might look like a battery terminal but it's not the battery terminal it's not designed to plug into the battery it's some very high technical way that Victron have designed to record accurate temperatures it's something to do with the amperage or the current that's going through that end of that and it reacts in different ways to certain temperatures and that from that it gathers what the temperature is and apparently it's highly accurate so I'm going to use that to get the temperature inside my vehicle and I could have another one to have inside the fridge another one in the freezer if I want another one externally because I believe they're waterproof I think so because I wouldn't mind having one hidden up under the rooftop tent to record how hot those summer days are <laughs> it gets hot up here guys or I could record how cold it is how cool would that be or even one run one up into the um, the tent that'll be interesting graph to see the temperature that's inside the thunder top compared to outside temperature compared to inside the car compared to the fridge I got all four I can use there and it's also another four that I can use to monitor how much fuel I've got in the car how much water I've got left in my water bladder etc so you can buy those there's all these sensors there's many different types of sensors you can buy that plugs into that Serbo GX and you can see how it's connected so all these blue lines here they're all connected to the devices and of course it's also getting its power from the Egon DC hub now you might notice there's no AC charger on here I've got an iTech World 120X lithium battery which is 120 amp power and they say it's a drop-in battery but I want to stick to the proper charger for the correct chemistry so I want to get an AC charger that's compatible with lithium now I also want to update my inverter here because I've had this for a very long time something like six seven years so it's a very old design I'd like to update that too so looking around it just so happens that Victron makes a device that incorporates both of them into one and they call it a multi plus so I'm, I'm thinking about getting one of those and another benefit if I get one of those is it incorporates with the Serbo GX I can plug the Serbo GX well I can actually plug the multi plus into the Serbo GX and what that does if I go to another screen here but I want to show you this see this here that kind of resembles what a multi plus looks like and that's what it is okay so if I connect the multi plus onto this I'll have access to all this other information data you can see here AC inputs the AC loads so that's the inverter that will monitor the load that's coming that's producing from that inverter from the devices and that's going to be handy because more data I got more data coming in it says you know I've got a scooter electric scooter 
So I can leave it in the vehicle after the ride, wait till the battery cools down, plug the charger in for the inverter, and I'll be able to monitor it while I'm going out for a walk or I'm back at home. I'll just leave the cool scooter in the car, ride again the following day after it's fully charged. So that's another beauty there with that system. And it's fairly compact as well. So seriously consider doing that instead of purchasing two separate devices. It'll allow this graph here to work. And plus it'll save all that data and upload it up to the portal. So more information, more information. I love it. The more information I can get, the more I'm loving this. It's just great. I love all this. I might also pick up a smaller MPPT solar regulator. So I can use on my 12 volt solar blanket that I've got when I need that additional power. So it's very small, packs up small. I've got a real small solar blanket that I can just put over the windscreen of the car. And that'll come in handy for that. And that'll have, then that will show two of the solar panels and I'll have the correct information coming through from each one. So I just thought of that now. It's probably a very good idea because those small Victron MPPT solar regulators just for a 12 volt system, they don't cost much at all. So I should invest in one of those as well. I think that's pretty well covered it all. So that's the latest of today. You've seen how my system works. I'm going to call it at that now. So thanks for watching. And as I mentioned before, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. If you have, thank you very much. Big double thumbs up for you. <laughs> you click on that subscribe button wherever it is, guys. Click on that and put it on the notification bell as well so you get notified when, when the new video is up. So guys, till next time. Look after yourself, be kind to everyone and cheers.